and uh, but anyway, I'm making never fail <laughs> homemade noodles. Uh, this recipe comes out of the First Baptist cookbook from Betsy McKnight out of Arkansas City, Kansas, and I've been using this recipe for a long time. It calls for one cup of flour, and all I do is put it up here. I take the knife, I kind of cut it, and just and then you have a cup of flour. I use a quarter teaspoon of butter, and I like butter, not margarine, and it's not. I don't measure it. <laughs> so I use more than probably necessary, but it's all good to me. You use a half a teaspoon of salt, and I love iodized salt. You need your iodine. It's very important for your thyroid. So I put that in there, and I think really the egg noodles taste really good because the salt is already in them, and so you're not trying to figure out how to get the flavor into the egg noodle. And then a quarter teaspoon of baking powder then one egg and I do seven or eight batches when I'm doing them sometimes maybe that's too much but a lot of times I'm making them for a family reunion or for um, a church functioning or something and so I use my big uh, roaster and stuff but I'm making extras this time because I know my nephew is going to ask for them. Oh, put the egg in there. Then you take two and a half tablespoons of milk. I used to add yellow food coloring while I was making the dough and I don't deal with that anymore. I just, when I'm making my noodles, I put the yellow food coloring in there and voila, it's perfect. Um, I used to use a food processor and it worked a lot better. Some people believe that if you beat it too much that it will make your egg noodles tough. And so what you have is a dough ball. This one might be a little bit sticky so I might have put a little bit more milk but sometimes all I do is just add flour which we're going to come over here and we're going to go to this part of the process now I have some balls started and that's what I'll do I usually go ahead and like do seven or eight batches there and then I bring it over the table and I have it totally floured and then I roll it out with my roller and my grandkids have learned from a young age how to use a roller uh, we don't need play-doh we have egg noodles we make them a lot and then I have a special cutter that I can just cut and I don't remember where I found this apparatus but it's really came in handy and I've used it for a lot of years um, this is one of the old-fashioned types of egg noodle cutters uh, you would roll it out and then you would cut it with this um, I can remember back in the day using it it was okay but a little bit tough uh, my husband gets upset if I cut into my table of course um, so on this machine we have a flat and then we have where it cuts the actual noodle. I uh, usually run the dough through the flat and I'm showing you you know as if it's like process to process but I usually make all my dough balls roll it all out and I'll have it all stacked over here and um, or and then I roll it flat and then I'll roll the noodles so I'm just showing you in a different step and uh, so I used to really roll them thin and you didn't really have texture in your egg noodles so I'm not doing that this time around and so then I switched it to this side and I put my dough in there and it rolls out noodles. Now I know a lot of people they use their KitchenAid one or they use they have an electric noodle maker you know those are just fine um, really this dough works good in just about anything and so I make my noodles and so I hope you can see them um, then after I get them rolled out I usually lay clean this up and lay a newspaper under there and then I'll lay newspaper on it so that dust and stuff doesn't fall because it's going to take a little bit of time 
for them to dry out. Now they kind of need to be dried out to go in the freezer and they can go like this batch if I used half of it I could freeze the other half and save it for Christmas time if I didn't have time to make more or like I said I give people some or however I want to do it but as you can see there's flour and as I'm doing this I'm going to be adding a lot more flour and people have asked me how I get my egg noodles to have gravy when you buy your egg noodles at the store there's no flour on them in the freezer department but here I have lots of flour so then when I'm scooping mine up which um, you can cook them just like this go straight from here into the pot uh, that's not going to hurt anything um, when I scoop them up I'm getting flour so obviously I'm making gravy and um, the uh, I cook a whole chicken and I take the chicken out now uh, there's lots of my family that think that there should be no chicken in your chicken and noodle and that was a lot of the reasoning why was grandma cooked a turkey and she used the broth off the turkey she didn't have meat in it and so they felt like grandma never made uh, chicken noodles with the chicken in it but she did um, but anyway I cook it I take the whole meat out of it now if I'm cooking leg quarters they're fatty and so I will take some of the fat off Otherwise, I leave the fat on there. Uh, you know, I believe that a lot of us can have that. Some people can't if you want to take it off. I cook it the night before. I'll put it in the refrigerator. The fat rises to the top of the pan, and you can actually just scrape it off. If you want to throw it away, throw it away. Um, then I get my water boiling, my broth, and you can add water to it, and it doesn't matter. You know, I just kind of guesstimate. I'm not a very good precise. But this nor is chicken bouillon is my next um, thing that I use and everything like I make uh, gravy out of I, I keep my bacon grease I'll take two tablespoons of gravy or so or bacon grease and put it in the bottom of my pan and then um, put my flour get it hot put my flour in there but I'll add some of this and voila I have really great tasting gravy and it just you know if you don't have time or a budget you can make a lot of good gravy out of that kind of thing um, but this is really kind of the key ingredient and you just have to kind of play around on how much you want for your flavor and uh, so then I cook them and everybody loves them they the kids love them dry uh, actually my kids don't like chicken and noodles but the grandkids do so it skipped a generation so anyway thank you guys